Hello everyone. This is Raju giving a lecture on face. It's quite interesting to speak about the face. Anatomically, in daily life, the importance of face is very important. We would have heard about the face is the index of the mind. Face indicates many things in the way. Face is provided with the now we speak about the anatomy of the face and muscles which are responsible for various expressions in the body. As the face is the index, we can use the face for various expressions in which we can see the details of the anatomical aspect of the face. Face is provided with the natural openings and it is guarded by fissures. If it is the offline lecture it would be very interesting even with all expressions and all. So we could follow the guidelines, online guidelines. We'll uh, understand the topic of an uh, facial anatomy. It's guarded by fissures and it is extended, limited above the hairline. It would be has their own hairline. The male pig pattern is M shape is common for males. And the females have the different hair lines. It's limited above the forehead with the hair line and below the chin and the base of the mandible. And on each side, the biauricle. So these are the boundaries of the face. And the skin and the superficial fascia of the skin of the face are highly vascular compared to other areas. Rich in sebaceous and the sweat glands. And the facial skin is thick, elastic, and provides attachment of facial muscles. The skin itself is giving muscular attachment. So, this is what we have to understand. The deep fascia is absent in face. There is no deep fascia at all. The muscles are subcutaneous, all are subcutaneous. Here, the diagram depicts clearly. You could see if the skin so has been removed from this face and the muscles are exposed clearly. You can see the various muscles. We are going to learn in detail about that. It's the eye area around the muscles, the nose area around the nose, few muscles are there and around the oral cavity is another fissure. You can find the muscles around the oral cavity, the platysma muscle, zygomaticus muscle, orbicularis, oculi, orbicularis pores and these are the blood vessels related to the scalp, even the blood vessels related to the face also can be seen. The facial muscles are arranged in groups around the orifices, act as a sphincters, like the oral cavity has its own sphincter and the dilators as well. Even we close the eyes and we open the eyes because of the sphincteric action only. And the face also, the one which with which we are speaking now is because of this it's being sphincteric action only and the people having continuous speech may not be able to control their sphincters this is a commonly known and understood word and facial muscles are classified as the muscles of eyelids and the muscles of nose and the muscles of lips and cheeks garbic first we briefly understand the few muscles. The remaining muscles will be explained on the tabular column. First, we'll see the orbicularis oculus. Oculus means the eye. The orbicularis oculus is taking origin from the medial palpebral ligament and it's going to insert over the lateral palpebral raphae. The actions are, acts as a sphincter of the eyelids and the corrugator supercilia you can see the eyebrows, just above the eyebrows, there is an elevation, superciliary arch, supercilia. Cilia means area and super above. Corrugation means fusing together. Corrugator superciliary from medial end of the superciliary arch, taking origin. Superciliary arch is a part of the bone and inserted into the subcutaneous tissue of the eyebrow and produces vertical wrinkles of what is the action of this corrugator super vertical wrinkles for the forehead. You can practice even the forehead froning vertical wrinkles are because of the 
corrugated supercilia. Whereas the horizontal wrinkles are by the frontalis nodule. Remember this. And the occipital frontalis studied in detail under the heading of scalp. Here we can find the muscles which we have studied now. This one is the orbicularis oculus. Orbicularis oculus. And the muscle can be located here. Superciliary arch in the medial palpebral ligament. And this is how the muscle is located, orbicularis oculus. Then the remaining muscle, the procerus muscle also located exactly over the glabella. Now we will see the remaining muscles also can be seen just to recall while studying theory. Levator labia superioris, here you can look at levator labia superior, labium upper lip superior, which elevates the lip upper side superior elevation. Then the nasal is over the nose, and here you can see jagomaticus, major minor muscles, both are here. Seek, just above the seek, jayuma. Then the rhizorius muscle, the Platysma muscle, very important muscle, a long muscle. And uh, depressor, dip, for depressing the lip lower side, the depressor angularis oris or anguli oris. Angle, to depress the angle, depressor angle. Depressor lip, depressor levi inferioris, inferioris. Inferiorly inferioris. Then the oris, like the orbicularis oculus, here also above, around the oral fissure, you can find one more muscle called orbicularis oris. Then the muscle surface continued. The procerus we have seen just now, and continuation of the medial part of the frontalis is procerus and arising from the fascia covering the nasal bone and inserted into the skin between eyebrows. So, this is a procerus muscle. Procerus muscle uh, it's, uh, across the bridge of the nose, cross or the wrinkles during phroning. So, few people will express the Anger over the nose will be commonly hearing this word. So, procerus are producing the transverse wrinkles over across the bridge of the nose in phroning, especially. And the nasalis muscle from maxilla it is taking origin and it is going to insert on the alar cut. Ala means the wing, wing just over the nose. You can find the cartilages both the sides. So, this is called as ala and uh, compresses and dilates the nasal aperture. This is the action of the nasalis muscle. Again, you can see the same, the nasalis muscle, this one. Then the depressor septi arises from the incisive fossa. Incisive fossa is here and we'll find this one over the skeleton of the maxilla and inserted into the mobile part of the nasal septum. Nasal septum has the mobile part most anteriorly and inferiorly and immobile part also then mobile part of the nasal septum is going to insert. So that's how it's called as depressor septi. Then the muscles of slips and cheeks, they are nine in number. The levator labia superior is the side. Then arises, it's arising from the maxilla and inserting to the ala of the nose. And it elevates the upper lip and dilates the nostrils. Even in seriousness also, we'll be dilating the nostrils. Then the Levator labia superioris. Labia means lip superioris, elevating the upper lip, then arises from lower margin of orbit, inserted into the upper lip. Arises from the lower margin of orbit and inserted into the upper lip. Then elevates the upper lip, increases the, the nasolabial furrow. Nasolabial furrow is increased because of this. Levator labiae superioris. Here you can see the levator labiae superioris alicanis. There are two muscles called as the levator labiae superioris and the levator labiae alicanis. Then we can find the same muscle here, levator labiae superioris and the levator labiae superioris alicanis. Nigomaticus minor. Nigomaticus minor. Bone is a gigomatic bone to the upper lip and gigomaticus major from gigomatic bone to the angle of the mouth. 
and the levator angulate pore is arises from the maxilla and inserts into the angle of the mouth. So raises the angle of the mouth. That's how it is called as levator angulate oris, depressor levator inferioris, depressor angulate oris. These are the muscles, depressor angulate oris, and depressor levator inferioris, and the rhizorius muscle as well. Rhizorius muscle, variable slip of face arises from parotid fascia, inserted into the angle of the mouth, retracts the angle of the mouth. The rhizorius muscle and the mentalis or the chin, we can locate this muscle, arises from the incisive fossa and mandible, inserts into the skin of the chin, skin of the chin, or the mentum, and protrudes the lower lip of in drinking. So, this is how mentalis will help. It's a mentalis muscle, here we can locate, and the rhizorius muscle, here we can locate. And the vaccinator muscle, the muscle of a cheek, thin and quadrilateral, arises from the alveolar process of maxilla, inserts into upper lower lips and angle, and structures piercing the vaccinator are important. That's how the parotid duct, the buccal branch of mandibular nerve, and the four to five molar mucus glands that flattens the cheek against the gum. So these are the structures which are piercing the vaccinator muscle. One is the parotid gland, parotid duct, which connects the parotid gland drains the parotid gland, you can see, and the uh, buccal branch of mandibular nerve and the mucus glands as well. It prevents the accumulation of food in the vestibule, and it's not a muscle of facial expression. Here you can locate the vaccinator muscle, or angular in nature. The orbicular sore is around the oral fissure. It's arising from the maxilla and mandible, insert into the skin of the lips, Orbicularis oris. Facial expressions and the muscles. Proning is by, done by the corrugator supercilial vertical rings. And the surprise and horror and fright is because of the frontalis muscle. The transverse wrinkles are formed. And the anger is dilator nerves and the depressor septi. And the sadness is because of elevator anguli oris and the elevator. Levi superior is. And the laughing is because of the Jagomaticus major and minor. Remember this one. Laughing is because of Jagomaticus major and minor, which are located over the cheek. Irony is a depressor levi inferior. Then the grinning because of the rhizorius. And the disdain is because of the mentalis. So these are the muscles which are in the tabular column, which we have discussed already corrugated supercilia, orbicularis oculus. Procerus, the compressor nearis, the dilator nearis, the pressor septi, the orbicularis poris, and the vaccinator, and the levator levia superioris, jagomaticus major minor, levator levia superioris, levator levia superioris alikinese, levator anguli oris, the jagomaticus major and minor, and the depressor anguli oris, depressor levia inferioris, mentalis, rhizorius, and platysma. All these muscles have been explained in this. And here is a word called as. Modiolus is a compact mobile fibromuscular structure present at about 1.25 centimeters lateral to the angle of the mouth. This, we can locate it easily. So, this is a compact area just beside the angles of the mouth. Here we can see. So, this is a muscle called the platysma muscle. Again, you can see the long muscle from the mandible is extended towards the clavicle. So, wide and not long muscle. And the modulus can be located from this diagram. And the actions of the muscles, smiling and laughing, is because of uh, the egomaticus major. And the sadness, already have discussed. Grief is because of the depressor angular worries. Anger and the dislike is because of corrugator supercilia. And this is an additional note over the actions of the muscle. And the grinning is because of the rhizorius. Contempt is an additional note. Because of jagomaticus minor, closing of my mouth. Orbicularis poris. Whistling is because of a vaccinator and orbicularis poris. And these are the muscles, the smile, the sadness, is like, you can see the frowning even, the hair also frowning, horizontal wrinkles, surprised expression, fright expression, and the whistling expression is because of the vaccinator and orbicularis poris. The now supply. Each half of face is supplied by the 13 nows 
One is motor and the ester sensory. Here we can see the motor now, the five branches of the facial now, the temporal, geomatic, buccal, and the marginal mandibular and the cervical. Five branches, you can remember them easily. Temporal, geomatic, buccal, marginal, mandibular, and cervical is because of motor. This now are giving a motor supply. Here you can find these five nerves. Jagomaticus, then the temporal, jagomatic, marginal, mandibular, buccal, and the cervical. The sensory supply is because of <clears throat> uh, from the three divisions of trigeminal nerve, the ophthalmic, mandibular, and maxillary. Is here you can locate the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular nerve, sensory nerve supply, and the arterial supply is uh, following the five formula and the facial and the transverse facial arteries branches of facial artery and uh, reaches the face by winding around the lower body. You can palpate the pulses of pulsations of the facial artery against the mandible lower border of the mandible. So touches course of this facial artery can be traced towards the angle of the mouth and even the angle of eye, medial angle of the eye and ends by anastomosis with the ophthalmic artery. Then you can trace the facial artery from the external carotid artery, winds down and touches course angle of the mouth and the angle, medial angle. You can feel the pulsations even at the medial angle of the eye, there of the facial artery pulsations. And the venous drainage by facial retromandibular facial vein lies behind the facial artery, commences as an angular vein at medial angle of the eye in a reverse manner from the board onwards. In neck joins with the anterior division of retromandibular vein to form common facial vein. Finally, drains into the internal jugular vein the connections with the cavernous sinus. Here we can locate supratrochlear, supraorbital, then the angular vein becomes the facial vein, retromandibular vein joint together to form the facial vein. And here we can see the from the retromandibular vein, posterior division, the anterior division, so draining into this one, the common facial vein. The so joining with these two facial vein and the Anti division of the retromandibular vein joined together to form the common facial vein. The applied anatomy blood from the facial vein may pass in a retrograde way to cavernous sinus from upper lip and adjacent nose. So we have to locate the dangerous area of the face, this, uh, including the nose and the upper lip and the nostrils and the food. This triangle indicates the dangerous area of the face. And the lymphatic drainage of the face, there are three regions, upper area, intermediate area, and the lower area. Upper area is paid by preauricular and superficial parotid lymph nodes drain into. Then the intermediate drains into the submandibular lymph nodes and the lower lymph area drains into submental lymph nodes. So these are the lymph nodes. You can trace parotid lymph nodes. Then the Buccal lymph nodes, here you can locate the submandibular lymph nodes. And this is about the face, we will just review the facial muscles. We have studied the, the corrugator supercilia muscle in detail and the orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, nasalis, levator, alicinesi, levator levia superioris, then the rhizoidus muscle, zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor, and the mentalis platysma, and we read about the modulus, the elevation. These muscles we have studied in detail. Thank you very much. We'll continue the next lecture. With, with this basic information, we can go for further reference. Thank you very much.